Well, poster workers going on strike on Capitol Hill in hopes they can save the dying agency. Congress has plans in the works to slash much of the funding to the agency and mass layoff workers. The postal workers are pointing their fingers right back at Congress for putting them in this predicament in the first place. That's because back in 2006, Congress passed a law requiring the USPS to refund, to prefund, that is, health benefits for 75 years. Here's the ad by America's Postal Employees. The Postal Service is critical to our economy, delivering mail, medicine, and packages. Yet they're closing thousands of offices, slashing service, and want to lay off over 100,000 workers. The Postal Service is recording financial losses, but not for reasons you might think. The problem? A burden no other agency or company bears. A 2006 law that drains $5 billion a year from post office revenue, while the Postal Service is forced to overpay billions more into federal accounts. Congress created this problem, and Congress can fix it. Now, workers are firing back to make sure they can continue to deliver our mail, something they've been doing for centuries. To talk more about this, I'm joined now by Chuck Bader. He's the treasurer for the American Postal Workers Union. Welcome, Chuck. Thank you for having us. So, postal workers blame Congress for putting the agency in danger. Why? Exactly. In 2006, Congress passed a bill called the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act. One provision of that bill requires the Postal Service, the only agency, government or private, anywhere in America, to prefund future retirees' health care benefits 75 years into the future, which burdens the U.S. Postal Service with a payment of $5.5 billion per year. And certainly that's a lot of money um, and a big burden to bear. Why single out the Postal Service? The honest fact behind the scenes that we need to make the American public aware of is there are interest, corporate interest, who are trying to privatize the Postal Service. By passing this provision in the law in 2006, their intent and their sole intent was to drain the Postal Service financially to its breaking point, which they have succeeded in doing. But we need the public to fight back and ask that that law be repealed. And so who exactly would stand to benefit from privatizing the Postal Service? corporate America, and we believe specifically Congressman Darrell Issa, who is the author of the bill that would destroy the Postal Service, H.R. 2309. Speaking of Congressman Darrell Issa, um, we kind of have a sh chart here to show how to follow the money. Um, we have this list of the top 20 campaign contributors to Representative Issa. This is between 2009 and 2010. And if you look over at number 18, wouldn't you know it, FedEx corporations, they donate, donated over $10,000 to his cause. Um, and more recently, FedEx kicked in $2,500 in support for him. So um, I guess Representative Issa, to be fair, he also did get some funding from the post office. However, their representatives now say they will not receive another dime. So, I mean, it, it's pretty clear that if you follow the money, that this could be could explain things. Oh, sure. And there are also billionaires behind Congressman Issa as well trying to push this issue. Uh, okay. And, um, you know, uh, the options, like, like we just mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. UPS and, and FedEx, they presumably, because they would be driven by profits, right. would only to deliver to places that are profitable. So um, if this, in, if Postal Service was to be privatized. I mean, what does that mean for the average American? You know, you, me, who likes to send out postcards right. <laughs> or letters in the mail because we still do use the mail. You just slap a 40, 44 cent ta uh, stamp on it, sure. and then bam, you get it delivered to wherever, wherever you want, anywhere in the U.S. I mean, what would that mean for the way, part of the way we still communicate? Right. Well, on uh, a more um, life or death situation, being very frank here, rural communities would suffer tremendously because senior citizens who live in rural communities, if there was not a postal service delivering to them, would not be able to get their medications at their door. They would be forced to drive to the nearest post office 40 or 50 miles away to pick up their medications. Now, during severe weather conditions like a snowstorm, that could cause a life or death situation for our senior citizens. And so what do you think about, uh, I guess maybe kind of taking a look at the other side of the argument, uh, okay. the fact that uh, these days a lot of people, the, the way we communicate has changed. Sure. And, well, you know, we text, we, we communicate via email instantaneously, uh, and this has become a main means of communication. Um, and because of that, 
we don't use mail to the same extent that we did back in the day. Sure. So, so what do you make of that argument? The fact that, again, uh, lower income Americans will suffer because without a postal service, they would not be able to send those bills. The reason, 25% of Americans, one in four Americans, does not have any Internet access whatsoever. They rely upon the postal service to make their house payment and their credit card payments on time. Without a postal service, FedEx or UPS would charge an outrageous amount to try to do that. And talk about more about, because privatization seems to be what is behind this. Yes. Uh, people that do stand to make money. Um, what that would mean, what, what would America look like if this was privatized, it, or it becomes privatized? Sure. What it would look like is a 75% three-fourths reduction in door-to-door -door mail delivery. So whereas you're used to getting mail delivered to your house, you again would have to drive 30 or 40 miles to your post office. So three-fourths of Americans would be eliminated for mail home delivery. And depending on where you are, um, you would just be out of luck. Exactly. The burden becomes up on you to spend your gas money and your time picking up your mail. That's something we as a postal service are doing for you right now. And right now, as I mentioned before, you just pay 44 cents and right. pretty, pretty good deal, pretty good deal there. Yeah. You, you get it uh, wherever you want in the U.S. What would the price difference be should it become privatized? Just to give you an example on package delivery, a package the Postal Service would charge you about $10 to send, Federal Express would charge $52. Wow. So, yeah, dramatic, dramatic increase. Big difference. So yeah. people will kind of have to watch what they mail then, huh? Oh, absolutely. And around Christmas time, or again, we're talking medications, a lot of mail order catalog business is being generated through the Postal Service. That's right, and a lot of people, um, and, uh, that's a, a way that people uh, advertise, that is, these yes. days. Yeah. By direct door to door in your mailbox. Still serves a function, would you say? And also a business function. Like you pointed out, the Postal Service is the cornerstone of a $1 trillion industry envelope manufacturers, advertisers, different people like that. So closing the Postal Service would have a ripple effect into other businesses that rely on the Postal Service. And you know, one thing that critics say, mm -hmm. uh, you, you hear from a lot of Republicans, uh, Representative Issa, that things are more efficient when they are privatized. People say, you know, the long lines at the post office, um, a lot of bureaucracy, um, that when things are privatized, there tends to be more competition, and therefore um, it's a more efficient system. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think about that? My campaign slogan on that is don't buy the lie because it's not true. But the one area where you could consider to be true is the prison system. And unfortunately in Colorado we've seen that have a devastating effect on our citizens. By having a more efficient prison system and a more efficient court system, they're now over capacity. So that's one area where it's bad because again that's a profit driven motive behind that. All right. Well, now you are fighting back. You and your, your fellow post, postal workers are fighting back to try to prevent this from happening. Yes. Tell us about what you're doing. I see that you're wearing a shirt there. We have these flyers out um, advertising a hunger strike to save the post office. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you doing over there on Capitol Hill? We're trying to draw a visual connection in the fact that we're starving by not having food in the same way that Congress is starving the Postal Service by not repealing the pre-funding requirement. Congress's failure to repeal the pre-funding requirement cost the Postal Service $15 million every day that they wait to take action. That's why we're doing something dramatic by having a hunger strike to tell Congress we can't afford to wait. As we as protesters are starving every day, you as Congress are starving the Postal Service by failing to repeal the pre-funding requirement. And how long do you plan on going on strike for? Right now we're planning on until Thursday that may be extended, but unfortunately a lot of postal employees Postal employees are going hungry all the time because of the cutback in hours, because of the consolidation of offices. So they are starving beyond this hunger strike. And ultimately, what would you like to achieve through this hunger strike? Through the hunger strike, we would like to get Congress to repeal the pre-funding requirement of the pension health care benefits. That's our main single goal. As a matter of fact, if they eliminated the pre-funding requirement, the Postal Service would not have to make any cuts, would not have to go down to five-day delivery, and would not have to lay off a single person. We've ran the numbers on it. Had the Postal Accountability Act not passed in 2006, had that law not passed, the Postal Service, even in the worst recession in 80 years, would have made a profit in 2011 of $600 million. We are a viable organization, we are adjusting to economic conditions, and we do not need to be shut down in any way.
All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your story. And good luck to you Thanks for the um, on your hunger strike out there. Stay hydrated. Yes. At least. <laughs> thank you so much. That was Chuck Bader. He's the treasurer for the American Postal Workers Union.